Hi, I'm Scott Williford, CEO and founder of V-Link Solutions. We have been having a great discussion with Howard Flint of Ghost Partner. And so, Howard, when we broke off on the last segment, mm -hmm. we were just diving into frequency. Right. And, and you've mentioned blogs and blogging. What, what is the ideal frequency for blogging? Well, that's a tough question because we really do take that client by client. Okay. Um, if you're the kind of business that engages with your clients often, you probably do need more frequent content. So, for example, a blog, we might do twice a week for you. Okay. 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 But if you're my real estate agent, I bought a house from, I don't necessarily want to hear from you every other week, but I do want to hear from you because I got to keep top of mind awareness or you right. should keep top of mind awareness of me. Right. So it really depends on the business, but blogs we like to do about twice a week. Newsletter could be twice a month or once a month. Okay. So now blogging is one thing, right? I get, I follow some folks on Twitter and on LinkedIn right. and, I, and I have to confess that I think some people need some coaching yes. on the frequency of, of LinkedIn updates and Twitter, right. Twitter feeds. So what, what is, how do you gauge that? What is, what is the right formula there? You know, what's interesting, and I don't know how you do it, Scott, but there are some people I'll follow on Facebook and there's some people I follow on Twitter. Seldom do I follow the same person on both. Okay. So what we try to do with our clients is, again, they're trying to reach different kinds of audiences. Some of the old school with emails, somebody who's on the cutting edge wants Twitter, and then all in between, is that we want to get the same content out to all your outlets just in case. But for example, on Twitter, maybe we set you up with a once a month newsletter, mm -hmm. but we'll set you up with four tweets. So once a week, you're sending a tweet, a different tweet, but it's referring back to that same article. That keeps the Twitter sphere, if you will, rolling but keeps more value coming to that content. So you take you take a blog article or yep. a newsletter or a video. Yeah, video. And you you would tweet it out multiple times to extend the shelf life right. of that piece of content. That makes a lot of sense. Well you just you couch that tweet a little bit differently each time with it. So if somebody missed the first one or second one, maybe they catch that third one. It's the same as it's ever been. You're trying with a headline to catch someone's attention. So headline writing becomes really important oh, yeah. because it's not just about catching the search engine right. keywords, it's about flagging your viewer. Right, absolutely. And in fact, when we do, I mentioned the editorial calendar in the last mm -hmm. segment, the second thing we do is create titles. Okay. So we want to create, once we know what you want to cover, we want to really go in there and create compelling titles. Or if we're coaching you, we want to uh, coach you on how to create a really compelling title. And once those are approved by the client or decided that this is right, then we write an article on that. So actually the title becomes the tail that wags the article dog, if you will. <laughs> so can you give me an example of a bad title and a good title? Uh, a bad I know I throw, I'm throwing that out to yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. But you know, a bad title is something generally fairly long that is just doesn't make any sense. A good title is going to be short. And what we like to do is um, five ways to look good on video. Two okay. of the biggest mistakes you'll make when walking your dog. Something like that where I know I'm going to learn something. You've made a promise to me that I'm going to, I'm going to learn something from your article or blog. Right, right. That's kind of the way that, that I try to do when I do my public speaking. Is yes. like, here, are, I'm going to give you three tips on this or yep. something like that. And I guess, I guess it does follow through on the, the title writing as well. Yeah, absolutely. So in your experience, how quickly do your clients or how quickly do businesses really catch on to this concept? And Well, I mean, they usually by the time we're talking to somebody, they know they need content. In right. fact, almost every, if you took a everybody hand, needs everybody content. knows they need it. It's yeah. the getting it done that they have problems with. And right. In fact, most people just have, that's their biggest problem is just getting it done. So uh, everybody's on board. They just need to know what their frequency is going to be based on their business. And that's why we always start this with an interview to learn more about your business, and then we can build up a plan from there. Right, right. Well, you know, I've read a lot about content marketing and content marketing statistics and how that's increasing and there's different tactics. Right. So if you don't mind, I'd like to keep you around for one more segment. We'll sure. talk a little bit about that and what some of the different tactics are. So. I'm Scott Williford. We've been with uh, Howard Flint of Ghost Partner, and we're going to stick. We're going to get him to stick around for one more uh, segment so that we can get some pretty good how-tos uh, from him. So, I'm Scott Williford again, and I look forward to hearing about your successes.